Finding answers to sticky problems is all part of the business. And over in Hamburg, Airbus have been straining to ensure another important system works perfectly. Laid out in this building is a full-size test rig of the waste system for the A380. With up to 20 toilets and around 900 metres of piping, it's a big job. Senel Myrtle and Dennis Kaiser have been hard at work for the last two years. We will give you a short demonstration of a toilet flush on the A380. So at first we have to evacuate the toilet system. I can start this, it will get a little, little bit loud. The toilets work by pumping air out of waste tanks in the rear of the plane, causing a partial vacuum. When a toilet is flushed, air is sucked in to fill the vacuum and the waste is drawn down the pipes into the tanks. In the finished aircraft, these parts are made of titanium to save weight, but here Perspex is used for clarity. This is Formula One technology for toilets. And the result is some seriously speedy sewage. The speed um, of the piping is around 60 meters per second. 60 meters a second is about 130 miles an hour. Such high performance plumbing is needed because of the size of the plane. At nearly 73 meters long, the loos at the front are a very long way from the tanks at the rear. This is the most forward toilet in the A380, the one what the pilots normally would use. It is quite difficult because you have a, you have a pressure loss from the waste tanks to this toilet because of the, of the length. It's a challenge not to be sniffed at, but undeterred the guys give it a go. Ah, over. Just seconds later, the waste arrives at the tank and flushed with success, the engineers bring the A380 another step closer to reality. By March the 14th, 2005, the A380 is parked outside the factory here in France. The customers for this first plane are technically the test pilots who will fly it. But there's still a lot of work to be done before they will accept the machine. Head of the programme, Charles Champion, comes to take another look and discovers it's not all bad news. That's the most important part. The coffee machine for the flight test crew. If this doesn't work, they will never take the aircraft. Joking aside, it's clear that the plane is far from ready. The landing gear is just one of the things that need to be finished. Uh, we still have a lot to do. There is a lot of activity. So some of it is related to troubleshooting and other related to uh, closing the area. But uh, we do have a lot of people uh, still working on the aircraft. The next day, the test pilots turn up for a photo shoot. The media are naturally interested in the six men who will fly the A380 for the first time. Although they pose happily for the cameras, it's clear where their real interest lies, for within minutes of the last shot being taken, they're in the plane checking out the new machine. For flight test director Fernando Alonso, it's important to feel comfortable at his post. This is the place where I will be sitting for the first flight and it'll be, uh, it'll be almost my home for the next uh, months ahead, yeah. Hello. Surrounded by screens and readouts, Fernando will be able to monitor everything happening to the plane in real time. This screen, for example, it's what we call the flight list plane. So it shows us the uh, aircraft pitch attitude and bank angle. It shows us the speed, the angle of attack, the altitude, the heading. So just by having a, a glance at that screen, we have a very good overall picture um, of the airplane. The aircraft is equipped with sophisticated flight instrumentation, thousands of sensors that record every aspect of the plane's performance. 
Gathering this precious data is vital to the test flight program. If on the day of the first flight, the flight instrumentation does not work, we will not fly. So it's, uh, I think that, that sums it up, you know. Despite the seriousness of the task ahead, there's no doubt that A380 is beginning to generate a real buzz. It's really great to be here. We've been waiting for it so long and, uh, and now it's, uh, we're almost there. March the 30th and the plane is in a hangar again for final tests on the electrics and hydraulics. The moving surfaces are working, but one safety critical system still remains unproven. OK, cheers. Simon Sanders is back for a last ditch attempt to show the landing gear will deploy properly. His team hope they've come up with a solution to the problem with the sticking wheels. This is the ramp on the wing gear door where we put the grease last time. Now for a more robust solution, we've applied a, a layer of Teflon paint which is similar to the, the Teflon, the coating that you have on uh, non-stick uh, frying pans. So this will reduce the friction when we do the free fall. We're going to now perform the test to demonstrate that with this low friction Teflon coating that we've, we've solved the problem. The man they have to convince is test flight engineer Gerard Dubois, who will be sitting in the cockpit during the critical first flight. If Gerard is not happy, the first flight will be delayed. I want to be sure on this aircraft, before taking the aircraft in the flight test department, that the landing gear is working perfectly well. If it doesn't work, I will refuse the aircraft until the system is completely safe. As the landing gear is retracted in preparation for the test, everyone is aware they cannot afford to fail. In the cockpit, the system is primed. C'est parti, je lance. The problem persists but at least the gear slips free sooner than last time. In flight, the Airstream will probably shake the gear free sooner still. It's up to Gerard to decide if he's happy to accept the plane with the gear as it is. It's not marvelous, but uh, it is working, and at least even if the, the, <coughs> the, the, the left landing gear is not extended, at the same time that the right one, uh, yes, I think I will accept it, yes. The team will continue to refine the system, but at least the plane can now be handed over to the test pilots. Fernando Alonso is taking the opportunity to look round the plane to check that nothing has been missed in the final push. Like always, at the end, there's a big rush. We'll get very excited. Uh, but if, at some point in time you need to take a decision, okay, now stop, uh, it's over and uh, we take it over because otherwise it will just go on forever and ever. So. The plane has everything needed for the test to come, including these water tanks that will simulate the weight of hundreds of passengers. But in the rush to get ready, it appears that something's been overlooked. The cabin lights are not working. <laughs> cabin illumination is switched off. I don't know. So we have no possibility to switch the, the cabin illumination. I That's need the lights. The cabin lights uh, have to, 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 to be okay. We have been having handover meetings for the past two weeks. Yeah. Nobody ever said that the cabin lighting was not working. Nobody ever mentioned the limitation. Nothing was said about lighting. So now we put on the we put on the uh, breakers. If something burns, it will burn. With Fernando's words ringing in their ears, the engineers get to work, and in no time the lights are on. Immediately the mood changes, and the plane can be officially handed over.
J'ai la clé de l'avion. Ben. Et moi la carte grise. For Gerard Dubois, it's just like taking delivery of a new car. L'avion contre la voiture. On a une tradition en France, lorsqu'un, par exemple, un concessionnaire livre une voiture à son client, en général, il offre simultanément un bouquet de fleurs pour sa femme. Aujourd'hui, on a un magnifique bouquet de fleurs accroché sous l'avion. Ce sont des fleurs qui ont été cueillies ici, autour de l'avion. Voilà, tradition respectée à la française.